Welcome to Fusionverse, a show where we talk about anime, TV shows, movies, and games. And today we have a very exciting episode, and that is we're reviewing Avengers Infinity War. And the reason it took so long, because I literally, it was literally a week after I saw it, I wanted, I thought about, hey, oh, I'll just come out with a review, do it right away, but then stuff kept coming up, I was doing other things, growing this thing, it's still not fully grown, but as you can see, it's coming in pretty good. But I wanted to take my time and be like, okay, is anyone actually going, uh, you know, to see this review yet? Because probably they haven't seen the movie, so I thought, hey, I'll wait a week, and then I'll talk about it. So that's what I'm doing. And hopefully you've seen it. If you have not seen it, please uh, go see it. I really recommend it. It is a really good movie. I am I give it a 9 out of 10. It could have been a perfect 10. Uh, but there was uh, just something, a couple of things that I just didn't like about the movie. Uh, but yeah, let's let's get to it. Avengers Infinity War. Something that was uh, just so incredible from the just from the collaborations of all these different characters, uh, you know, meeting for the first time. The fact that uh, I guess it takes place, uh, you know, well, they show pretty much it starts off with like Thor and everything, everyone like all as guardians and just what happens to them. It doesn't show what happens to them. It just shows them like. They're pretty much, they're like, all dead. They're all down. And you just kind of thinking, like, wait, what? Like, like what, what the hell's going on? Why didn't we get to see, like, this big battle? And that's where kind of, like, the, one of the problems that I had with it, where you just kind of throws you in there, and you're kind of just like, oh, I kind of wanted to see this fight happen. I kind of wanted to see, you know, kind of this happen, this and that. But you don't really get that. You don't really get to see that at all, which is a, a pretty big disappointment, uh, if I do say so myself, because I, I wanted to see it. I wanted to see, okay, well, how did they get taken down? And especially because Hulk is there. Right? You don't you don't even get to see Korg, by the way, from uh, Thor Ragnarok. So that's a disappointment. People who are saying, like, oh, is he dead or is he not? Is he coming back? I honestly uh, don't know. And... It was very interesting just uh, to see, well, the outcome of it, of Thanos being there with his, I guess, his henchmen. Uh, and it was just interesting just to see that, I guess, that dynamic where he already beat them all down, including <clears throat> including Thor. And then, like, Loki, you know, has the test right because it didn't get destroyed. But then he doesn't end up giving it to, uh, or he is going to give it to Thanos. But then pretty much Hulk appears and like he's like we have Hulk and he's attacking Thanos and that was a okay type of battle but it just made I mean Hulk just looked way way weaker than what you know I thought he would be against Thanos uh, his attack you know but it didn't really seem to do anything which in itself was kind of a uh, huge disappointment just to kind of see that happen. But, hey, it happened. Uh, like, just the whole outcome of that. Uh, and, like I said, spoiler alert, if you have not seen Infinity War, please, like, just uh, just go ahead, stop this video, go watch it, and then you can watch it again. But, I forget his name. Uh, the one who could pretty much teleport Thor. He ends up, you know, getting killed because, well, he freaking teleports Hulk out of there. This whole kid speeded down. Then freaking uh, I guess Loki ends up freaking uh, you know, trying to kill Thanos, which obviously he couldn't, and he ends up getting killed, which uh, just it was felt really sad. It was like just he didn't actually have power in comparison, but I felt like maybe I don't know something should have happened, something else should have happened. Like, should I have been down? But that was pretty sad to see. And, you know, Thanos blowing up the ship and all of that. But, yeah, the, the whole just concept of him, Thanos just this embodiment of power. He's like, he finally gets off his ass and does something. It is honestly really incredible just to see. And they, kind of, and they show exactly, well, you know, his whole armor or why he only has, like, a certain piece of armor on him. 
Well, it's because he's just a complete badass, but also he has the stones, so he doesn't feel the need for it anymore, and he just kind of takes it off, which is interesting in itself, uh, just to see that happen. But his whole reasoning behind why he wants the Infinity Stones, what he wants to do, is honestly really interesting, and also kind of uh, where a lot of people were just like, well, it's, uh, it's kind of weird that like he wants to do this kind of thing. Because with the Infinity Stones, when he, once he has them, he basically wants to reduce the population in half, you know, from the universe, because there's a finite of resources. However, if you have the Infinity Gauntlet, couldn't you just make an infinite amount of resources that's where it kind of like falls down it fell down for i guess a lot of people i didn't think about them until just recently i've heard uh, other people talking about it. it's like hey couldn't he just do this and that makes sense uh so that in itself you know because he is supposed to be one of the most intelligent beings in the world but it doesn't seem that that crossed his mind he wanted to annihilate pretty much half the universe and that was basically it but however you see this complexity of emotions going through his character uh with gamora uh there's a specific scene where she thinks she kills him and at the end of the day she actually you know didn't it was you know the reality stone just made her think that and she felt this emotion for him because she killed him in in way she didn't actually want to kill him so that was that was actually pretty pretty freaking just just insane and you see this connection that he actually has to put towards her because he actually sees her as his daughter he loves her and he cares for her but yeah it's it's just the complexity of emotions especially with all these characters who want just revenge on panels trying to kill him uh and peter quill of course you know trying to save her but he's not able to pull the trigger and it's amazing just to see how what Thanos wants to do to, to get all these different infinity stones and it's it's even more just incredible he gets like the soul stone and all that but then when he's what he's he has to sacrifice his only daughter and the fact that you get to see red skull like holy sh like he's there because he wanted to get that stone but, you know, in search for those stones, he's given up his life. And that's where he's at now, where it's like, you can't accomplish your goal now. So for me, that was a very, very intense situation. Because he's talking to Thanos, where it's like these two, just maniacal beings. And they're doing something that they want to do, but then unable to accomplish it. But Thanos is just a different story. And get to see... This whole thing where Thanos has to give up the one, the one thing, the one person that he freaking just that loves and that it's his, it's his world in order to accomplish the goal. He even talks about how before he wanted to, you know, he failed. He wanted to save his people because he knew what was going to happen, but no one believed him. They chastised him, and then it happened. Every his whole planet was just destroyed because of just the greediness the the fact of just they didn't want to commit genocide and that's an interesting thing to think about because would you be able to do something like that um, our world obviously it's like is depleting they're trying to find out resources in other planets so they can kind of cultivate that trying to live on mars trying to you know look at all the rings of i think of saturn or something uh, just look out towards towards the universe to to for more resources because they're depleting here uh, because some people are just too greedy and don't want to actually use natural resources like wind energy solar energy uh, that would actually benefit uh, benefit us well then there's a whole just you know concept of you know trying to figure out would would you be able to make the ultimate sacrifice and you know thinking like the bigger picture 
But then that's when you have like these psychopaths come out where it's like, oh, well, we got to reduce the population. Let's start a war. Let's do this. And that's, you know, usually what happens. There's like, I don't even know how many wars going on right now where people are just dying sometimes for resources. You know, the whole invasion of other countries. So America's freaking done it. It's probably still doing it to this day right now. There's still wars going on. Some claim it's like, oh, to attack these certain types of people, to look for them. Others say, no, it's to get their oil, it's to get oil and stuff like that. All these, all these different, you know, misconceptions, just conceptions, things that are happening. And Thanos is just this person who is able to get the job done, who says, you know what? No, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this happen. And that in itself is so intense so crazy that he is willing to do that because you just don't know what this you know what exactly at first his full intention of what nobody really understands what why he's trying to do it until he explains it to dr strange when he meets when he meets him face to face and they have like this whole battle and then that's another thing where because uh, Doctor Strange gets taken because he has one of the gems, and uh, there's a part where literally one of the one of the bad guys gets his arm chopped off because it goes through like a portal and it seals up, cuts his arm off. I thought, hey, why don't they fucking do that to Thanos and cut that shit off? They could have done it, and I just saw like a meme talking about like it told me like a little comic strip of it. It's like, huh, this portal put his hand through it. That's it. But no, they, you know, that didn't happen. So that in itself was kind of like ridiculous. Like, why didn't you do that? You could have done it. You were doing it to, you know, put Spider-Man through all that stuff. You really couldn't think of like, hey, I mean, obviously they did that. That would be the end of it, right? But no, there's a lot of decisions that were made uh, throughout the movie. Uh, that were just in their entertainment aspects. There was it was really good, uh, really intense at times where I'm like, holy crap, this actually happened. One thing that I did realize though is uh, Thanos' ability to change the reality of something kind of seemed to disappear once he left. Um, of course, that's different to what he actually did. But when he turned Drax the Destroyer and he turned, uh, I always forget her name, with the antennas? Oh, Mantis. Yeah, Mantis. Uh, when he did to Mantis as well, uh, basically, like, you know, turning them into, I don't know what that was, like, cutting them up or something. They get back to get, they come, they compose themselves after he leaves. So, needless to say, it's probably not within his ability to keep certain realities, I guess, in focus, unless he chooses not to, unless he's actually there. However, uh, with the Soul Gym, I believe with the Soul Gym, he is able to kind of grow this power of taking lives. However, I believe that it's going to get reversed. Everything that Thanos did, uh, will disappear. I think he'll... I'm not sure if Gamora will be brought back to life. It would be interesting uh, to see that, but I think that she's actually gone. We're not going to see Gamora anymore because he sacrificed her. It's totally different. The same thing with Loki. I think with the snap of the fingers, certain, uh, a lot of the characters will come back like Black Panther. The... All right, I'll say this, the, the, the saddest scene, you know, was watching Peter, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, when he realizes he's, he's dying, he's disappearing, and he, you just see this emotion, and just Tony holding him, I wanted to cry at that point, I was like, oh my god, this is by far the craziest, most intense thing I've seen. Because I've seen all the other characters know about them. They're going, but they just disappeared. There was, there was truly 
not that much emotion in comparison to Peter because he didn't like he didn't want to. He did, you know, he was so he's so young and he's just like crying. It's like he's like, no, I don't want to go. I don't. And he goes away and he's, he has this connection to Tony Stark, who is like I guess in a, in a father figure to him. And honestly. I just, I couldn't believe, believe they did it. You know, uh, there was a lot of twists and turns uh, going on. And every character brought something to the table. Uh, the, the action was amazing. And normally you think, like, oh, it's, it's a fun movie. But then you have all these different uh, actions, all these different consequences occurring. It was just sad to see, you know, just things happen. But there is going to be another part. Um, I'm thinking that I'm not so sure, though, like the sequel is being shot right now. Or that's Miss Marvel. I mean, Captain Marvel. Or what exactly is going there. But and then of course, it's going to be the first movie after Infinity War. Uh, to be shown, so that in itself should be very interesting, because they're most likely going to have certain, I guess, outcomes uh, that transpire. So um, maybe they'll try to deal with it in some way. But from what I've seen in the trailers, it doesn't seem that they'll be kind of going in that direction. But possibly we'll be mentioning things. Uh, so yeah, that was honest. Uh, what I thought about Infinity War. Thank you so much for watching. <clears throat> Let me know what you thought about it. If you if you cared about any about like kind of like I guess loopholes or things that were you're like why didn't they just do this? Why didn't they just do that? You know, it's it would be very interesting just to see all this play out. Like seriously, Doctor Strange, you could have just turned back time. If you were using the fucking the fucking stone. Like seriously, you could have fucking used it. Just saying, you know. Where, you know, Peter Quill is doing that shit and it fucks it up. You could have just fucking done it. I don't know. So, thank you all so much for watching. And I will catch you guys on another exciting episode of Fusionverse. And remember, if you want to watch this live, go ahead and follow my Instagram, at RobinThisLobo. All the links are down below. I believe I have my Instagram down there as well. My Twitter, uh, my website, everything you need to know. Uh, for more videos, click there. They're really entertaining and fun. I have react, you know, reaction TV and another future first episode. Also, don't forget to uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and visit my Patreon if you want. I have it there for some reason. Probably just leave it there. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you want like a further deep analysis of like the movies and things like that, how it's made, certain aspects of it, well, let me know and I'll get, I'll go into it. But I'll say this, the further you go into just anal analyzing certain movies, and especially if you go into movies thinking that way, it does ruin it. I've done it before, and it does ruin certain aspects of it. So, with that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in another episode of Fusionverse. Take care.